Hello YouTubers, how are you guys doing out there? Thank you very much for joining me today and I hope that you find the following video very useful and more importantly very practical that you can do the same at home and get the same results. Now I just want to start off before I get into this video today firstly not only thank you for joining me today wherever you are around the world but I also want to say uh, one important thing that there's many other YouTube channels and users out there in YouTube land that do the same idea as what I'm going to show you but in their own different way and if you find that their way works better fantastic um, if you find that what I'm going to show you works just as well even better um, it's a very simple idea that I do but as you can see from my previous videos it gets me some really really good results in terms of running and that's what the hobby is mainly about is running trains and if you've got a locomotive that doesn't work very well mainly due to poor maintenance or lack of care um, it's very costly and it creates longer term problems and it also is, is very um, shall we say depressing <laughs> when you've got trains that you can't run or, or are very hesitant and run in and they stop and start and you know it's, there's simple things that you can do to, to rectify that and hopefully today I'm going to show you um, how to do that and certainly maintain your trains um, being an ex-railwayman myself for 18 years um, one of the most important things that I I know, and certainly most of you out there will know that you're into trains, that the full size things which the models are based on, before that train was taken out on duty, that train was inspected and, and it, the driver or the train crew went round that loco, be it a steamer or a diesel, and did the necessary checks to make sure that it was okay before it, it was running. And that's exactly the same thing you do on a loco. You go around, make sure that it's tight, mate, and it's lubricated, nothing's for wobbling or falling off and everything's correct and nine times out of ten if you don't look after your motor inside the train um, and it starts to get a little bit clogged up and dirty then you'll get poor running and you won't get as much performance out of the motor as it should do so hopefully today this will be able to rectify that and like I said you'll have some good results so my mission today is to educate you guys and girls on how to do something very simpler and very similar to what most people do on YouTube in terms of maintenance and you can take this idea away and do it at home. Anyway, without further ado, my operating table, as you can see, is an old tea towel I've got here. I use this because, not of the colour, but because it's textured. And because it's, it's textured, you can put things on here and they won't roll off as easily as what they do on a, as on a smooth surface. Like, um, obviously I've got my um, workbench underneath here, as you can see. Um, stuff rolls off here believe me even though it's got loads of holes in it it's a bit rough it does tend to make stuff fly off there if you're not careful so I tend to use an old tea towel it grips things better you can see what you're doing and like I said stuff doesn't go flying off everywhere one of the main law principles or principles of law that you will find in model railways is the principle law of sod's law and when sod's law happens and it does um, you will learn a new vocabulary that will impress your family and impress your neighbours. So the aim of this video is to prevent such law from happening. So, an old tea towel is very handy. What I also use here today is a small electrical flathead screwdriver. You'll need one of those in your toolbox. If you haven't got one, go out and buy one. They're reasonably available for most hardware shops. Um, don't buy the cheap ones because the ones with the cheap handles will snap and you'll end up doing yourself an injury and ruining your projects. So, decent flathead small electrical screwdriver like I've got there, that's what I use. I also use a reasonably decent pair of modelling tweezers. They're able to grip fine small parts and uh, kill the odd fly as it goes around the room. <laughs> um, yeah, a good pair of modelling tweezers is a, is a must in your arsenal and your weapons of choice in terms of model railway uh, maintenance. You do need a good pair of tweezers. So get these up on, on eBay. I got mine, it came with a flathead file and um, an X-Acto knife as they call it in the States, I call it a craft knife, a surgical knife, whatever you want to call it, a modelling knife, but you, I got mine with one of those and a flat file and a, and a pair of these, so these are great. Again, a good pair of modelling tweezers are a must, so you'll need a pair of those. I also use in my maintenance process that you'll see today, there's two ways that you can do this. I use but the cheapest, easiest way is to use some of these. These are cotton buds. These are invaluable. Regardless, go down to your local pound shop or your cheap shop, wherever you live, 
and pick up at least two drums of these because you'll get through them like no one's business and I kid you not you'll get through these um, these are fantastic for getting in all the small parts and places and you'll be surprised at the amount of gunk um, that comes off on these um, when you do your servicing so loads of cotton buds they are coming very handy I also use you'll see me use today one of these it's an old um, plastic container that came from some, some uh, very famous chocolates, I'm not going to plug those but they come from Christmas last year save the box because it comes in handy to put stuff in you can see what's in there when you put the items in there and it doesn't go missing so a little container and I've got a little clear plastic pot here what looks like water inside there, it's not, this is actually white spirit so if you've got some white spirit or terps um, you'll need to fill that up a little bit with some white spirit in there um, you can use lighter fuel if you want to you don't have to. Um, I particularly use white spirit and it, it produces the same results but I would say if you're using white spirit do not get this near the bodywork of any locos, carriages and rolling stock because it will strip the paint off and it will ruin your finish on there. So keep that well away from the bodies and uh, you disassemble everything before you even touch this stuff. But anyway put it in a little clear container like that and I'll show you what that's for and I'll show you why you put it in a little cup or container afterwards as well everything will be revealed if you watched Blue Peter many years ago that's an old show in England um, proof was in the pudding when they did everything so hopefully you'll see what, what happens in a minute so let's put that to the side one other thing that you can use and I stress the word can it's not a must it's not a golden rule it's not set in stone you don't have to use one of these but I use it purely because it's handy and I use it on loads of stuff on the railway uh, not, well, not the real railway but my model railway um, it's one of these it's a multi-purpose tool one of these um, doesn't have to be a Dremel you can get other brands out there on the market that are just as equally as good um, but what I would say don't buy these things on eBay that come from China are like £15 for a multi-purpose tool don't buy those because they're very dangerous and they won't last long and they end up not only ruining your projects but basically you could have a nasty accident with them so don't buy the cheaper nasty tools try and buy something half decent it doesn't have to be a Dremel it can be something else you know Black & Deck or whatever but a, multi, a good a general rule of thumb a good multi-purpose tool will come in handy and mine today has got who is it it's got a polishing wheel but stroke little buffing cotton wheel on the end of there I'll show you what I use that for afterwards but you don't have to use this this is basically does a little bit faster job than the cotton bud so if you want to do a little bit faster and get a finer job you can use one of these attachments in a multi-purpose uh, tool and it works just the same um, that's pretty much it for the tools that I use so what I'll do now I'll just stop the video let you guys go and get a cup of tea or coffee or you might want to order a pizza, whatever floats your boat, hey. And uh, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, welcome back to part two. So let's get on with the removal of the motor, stripping it down and show you exactly what I do. So first things first, we'll take the everything apart. I'll turn this upside down as best I can so you can see what's going on. Let me zoom in a little bit. Oh, that's zooming out. Just a touch more with the camera. That might do it. Okay, I'll try and get the best view. I am working upside down, not me personally, but my camera is mounted on my tripod above my workbench and the viewfinder is reversed, so it's a little bit, everything's back to front, so hopefully it works. Anyway, what I do, I take in my flat screwdriver and basically if you lever it off from this end, in nearest to the fuel tanks, that should come out like that and just ease that out like so try and get everything in frame so that's what you want to do get to that stage and then if you carefully remove these these tags you can do it by hand quite easily gently pull those off you can use a pair of pliers I'm not going to bother to do that I actually use my screwdriver believe it or not leave those off there we go and there's another one there if you notice on this particular model I turn it over you can see that um, there's this separate wire here this one here you can see um, that goes to the lighting unit at the front where the headlights are so that makes your lights light up so that just let's have a look exactly where that goes on the motor if I just zoom that in or 
get it as best I can in. Uh, come on, today, where are you? There we are. On top of the motor there, that's where the tag sits on that area of the motor. So you'll see a slot that's purposely designed to grab that prong that feeds that lighting unit. So all you do basically is very carefully take that off like that. Check the connection as well on the, the tag. Sometimes these do get a little bit brittle and bend off or break, so you can easily solder that back on, it's not a problem. So we're done with that. Let's move that to one side. Okay, down to the motor, the most important thing to do. So what we're gonna do, as you can see, I'm not sure if you can see that in the light there, but I'll move that, there's it. If I rock that back if I rock it back and forth in the light, you can see there's loads, well not enough, not loads, but I mean it's quite well lubricated. So that's okay, we don't need to do that. What we need to do is take out the motor from the chassis and we need to get the actual access to the commutator and the brushes. That's the important bit. So what you do, again, just take your screwdriver and there's, there's two slots. There's one this end and one that end. There's like two indentations that go inside the plastic moulding of the bogey truck. And I always start this end, the, the back end of the motor. Put your flat screwdriver in and just lever it out. You hear it pop, it comes out quite easily do that so you separate it. Put this to one side because you'll need to clean that in a minute and have all the crap in there as well. Now the next part is we need to remove sorry about that we need to remove the brushes and the springs out of here to give those a clean. So what we do we bring in um, our come on where are you? Let me zoom out sorry this is a bit awkward doing this that's better so we bring in our white spirit like that and what we're going to do is remove the spring and the brushes from these two these two contacts and all you're going to do is just lever these up very carefully one at a time as you can see the springs do fly out and they are very fine so take those out there like that you can see there it is chuck it straight in the bath do the exact the same. I would suggest putting your finger at the bottom there like that because Sod's Law, as we talked about earlier, as you lift this up gently they tend to ping out sometimes because it's a spring, springs are always under pressure and force. And when you release that all the energy pings up and it goes flying across the room somewhere so you need to be very careful with these. Just lift it up like that, just enough like that and then just come in very gently chuck it in the bath and you can just move it up by hand and what I do I then tip this upside down and give it a tap and these two brushes should fall out he says sometimes they don't always do that no right okay it's plan B right plan B is to remove the face plate off here I call it a face plate, it might be something else you guys call it. Anyway, this is what I do, so just watch what I do basically. So, screwdriver blade in, in here, levers that off, as you can see on the camera there. Hopefully you'll see that. Let me zoom in. All that bumping and banging in the background, by the way, it's not thunder, that's my four-year-old running up and down the hallway. <laughs> so, uh, apologies. There we go. So if you can see that at home, I've, I've just pried that open like that and just follow it around with your screwdriver. You'll see it's, a, it's got little bearings on there. If the wheels fall off, don't worry, they will do that. It's okay. And there we go. That's what you want to do. You want to release this area and separate this because you'll need to give that a clean as well. And you'll notice there as well, you'll see that my two brushes are still in the sockets. So all you do is you just take your little bath, hold the plate over it if it's still got that on there and just pop these in it basically one two like that and you can see now I've popped out the holes and the two carbon brushes are in the bath that's exactly what I wanted so there we go put it to one side and you put this to one side as put this to one side as well with the bogey truck frame 
that I'll need cleaning. And what you should have now, let's move the wheels in the box over there. That's the sound of the wheels being put in the box so we don't lose them. And what we're looking to do, I'm not going to take the other wheel off because it's not really important, but what we're willing to do basically now, the next procedure, as you can see, that commutator is a little bit dirty. It's got a little bit of dirt on there, not much, because it was cleaned about six months ago, I think. But it does need a little bit of cleaning. For the purpose of the video, I'm going to do a little cleaning on it. So if I bring in the zoom on this, not too much, zoom it out. and get it center okay as you can see there's a little bit of dirt on there not too much but I'll prove this dirt on there if we get um, a cotton bud and if I just wipe that across the face a little bit like that just touch it in there as you can see there is it Phew. can't see that too well but that's better see the dirt on there already there's dirt on that cotton bud because there is dirt on there so what we need to do is clean it up so this is how I do it simply I will take my rotary tool and take my, cop take my little bath filled with the white spirit which is thus there and just touch it gently like that not too much on there just a little bit touch it gently over there and then I normally have it on about a number 10 setting on there about 15 actually and what I do I mean and all you're going to do is just very gently just go across there don't use a lot of pressure be, be sensible with it you just go across there like that go on to the next, next bit you can hold one of the cogs with your finger stop it rotating because it will start moving around once you apply the tool on it you've got to use a lot of pressure just a little bit be sensible with it what you have got to be careful with, if you, see, if you see these soldered contacts on the outside, one, two, three, um, be very careful with these, you don't want to damage those. You can re-solder them, but I say be very, very careful. Don't go too mad with it. So again, just come around, put a little bit on there. Turn it up a little bit. That's better. And all you're doing really is just cleaning off the dirt on there, getting the best part of it off. And just polishing it up. Keep moving round it to, to get it reasonably clean. Just do a little circle of motions like that. You haven't got to go too mad with it, but I say just be sensible with it. Just nice and gentle. Let the tool do the work. Don't don't use excessive pressure on it. Keep the tool moving at all times. Don't have it in one spot. Keep it fluid, keep it moving, like that. All right. 
and that's pretty much it. I mean, if I bring this up to the camera now, and hopefully the my trusty little lamp there will pick that up as well. That's better. You can see that sparkling like a new penny. That's exactly what you want. And now I bet you now if I put my clean cotton bud in, and I'll give that a little wipe, I bet there's hardly no dirt on that. Little tiny bit, little tiny bit. So what you can do now, I mean you can always be a little bit picky, because I'm I'm a Virgo by star sign, even though I don't believe in that. Um, they say Virgos are very meticulous, very, very finicky, and I am like that in real life. I'm, I'm very, very fussy. So I tend to go around it afterwards, if you want to, with a dry cotton bud and just give that an extra little polish, get the residue off there, anything left on there, go around it afterwards like that. Sorry, my hand's in the way, I do apologise. Just do that. Now, it's important to bring to note as well while we're doing this, if you see on the commentator there, there's three grooves. So there's like one there, one there, and one there. Those slots basically are, are isolated between each separate, well there's three um, plates on there and they're all electrically um, separate via these these gaps here. What can happen is you can get dirt and crap in there um, that will prevent good contact. So what you, I tend to do, you can use um, a pin, you can use a fine needle, but again I use um, the end of my tweezers because they are very very sharp. So don't Find your fingers and just very carefully what I do is go in between and just work outwards like that. As you can see there's a bit of muck on there. If you don't believe me, alright. Don't believe me. Where's it? Uh, let's see where's my camera? So I'm looking there we go. If I if I wipe that on there, you can see there's Mark, you can't see it maybe, but anyway. The idea is just to rotate it like that. And just pick out any muck in there. That's all we're doing, is just removing any residue in there, any that's left in there. Wipe it on the towel afterwards, turn it, do the same. That's got a lot, that has. As you can see, that's got a lot in there. You'd be surprised what accumulates in that running slot there. You'd be very surprised what accumulates in that little slot. Just go round, clean it. I think I'll go too mad with it, but just get the general gump out of there. It gives it every fighting chance, if you know what I mean. And then with the end of a cotton bud that's nice and clean, just go back on yourself and just wipe that area out. Someone might say this is overkill, but believe me, when you see this running at very slow speeds, you'll, you'll see why. Okay, so we've got that bit done. Nice and shiny, that's the, that's the name of the game. Also, you can take a cotton bud. You can't do this with a rotary tool, unfortunately, because of the, the space and obviously the, the, fine, the fineness of the operation and the work. You need to use a dry cotton bud and just get in underneath there, have a little look um, in the light, put it up to the light. If you see any um, residue or any filings or any bits of gump and dirt inside the, the mechanism there, you can always scoop it out um, with a cotton bud. Nine times out of ten a flathead screwdriver comes in very handy, like that. All we're looking for is getting the muck off there. Um, there is actually ways of, excuse me, getting these magnets from out of these these casings. You can do it, um, but you don't want to damage the magnets and you don't want to do any damage to this. They do come out, but they're not designed to really. So again, just looking for any major crap in there. To be honest with you, these don't get a lot of dirt or anything inside this area here. You won't find an awful lot. They're generally very clean because obviously it's, it's the magnet where the coils go around and it revolves. And obviously when you put current through, the magnets react and obviously turns the motor. But in this area here, if you see any hairs or fluff, you know, common sense, pair of tweezers and just pluck it out and do so forth. It's quite easy. So, 
our next name of the game is to put this aside now because it's nice, nice and clean. We'll put this to one side in my box over there. Now the fun begins. If you take your plate there, as I call it, uh, you can see. I'm not sure if it, you met on the camera there. I'll try and bring it up or zoom in. Let's see if I can do this. Come on, today. Ugh, that's horrible. That is. Okay, that works a bit better. As you can see there, there's a lot of gunk in there and a little bit of oil and dirt. So yeah, generally that might need a clean out. Oh, come on, camera. There we are. My lamp, my lamp wants moments of fame, so there's your moment of fame lamp. <laughs> right. Oh, the camera's playing up now. Thank you very much. That's better. Right. I told you sods lot, didn't I? I? Told you that happens. Anyway, what I do is, let's be serious now, just take your little pot of white spirit that's got your brushes and springs still sitting in the bath, dunk a cotton bud in it, the solution, not too much, and what you're going to do is just simply go around it like that, just get all the crap and bits out there, and as you can see you can twist the cotton bud with, the, with your hand and get all the muck off there and in the crannies and crevices of that plate there like that. Go in the where the brushes and springs go through those holes there, bit in the middle where the pin goes through as well. And look at that. Ugh. All that has come out of that. So believe it or not, that's all sitting in there and it's not helping the motor very much. You do get obviously a lot of oil and lubrication of the motor and from you know general usage but from time to time we will need to do this procedure to clean out these motors because it does improve their life and you know it just it's good practice and then what you can do is literally swap the other end of the cotton bud round so you've got a dry bit and then what I do again this is my way of doing things just go around and backfill or just go back on yourself and just dry it all off with the other end you can use a rotary tool, but for finer operations like this, sometimes by hand is better. You've got more control sometimes, and you just see what you're doing better sometimes. Sorry, my hand's blocking the way. There's no way to do this properly, is there? I'll try and do it that way. That's a bit better. Just twist it. Get in there like that. That's horrible. But even on that end, look. Look at that. That's a whole cotton bud's worth. So now we have to pick another cotton bud out. This is why I said you get through loads of these. And just go back and, and just have another go at it. It hasn't got to be sort of shine in mint condition, but it helps if you get it reasonably clean and you get all the gunk out of there. Let's give it another one. This is where you can use lighter fluid at home. If you get hold of some lighter fluid, if you ask a grown up uh, for the younger generation out there having to go by yourself, um, get an adult to help you with this and certainly get an adult to get some lighter fluid for you and help you with this as well because um, I'm not being disrespectful but there's quite a, quite a lot of younger people out there watching these videos on YouTube um, because they want to get into the hobby and they want to do it for themselves which is 100% thumbs up from me fantastic even the, you know the girls and guys that are younger in the hobby having to go themselves fantastic I'm all for that so if you're younger out there and watching this be careful with obviously with power tools be careful with sharp tools because they will um, hurt you if you don't use them properly. They certainly can give you a nice little injury. So use a grown. You ask a grown up to help you use the tools if necessary. If you're an adult watching this, obviously don't worry. But same procedure requires even adults. I mean, how many times have I hurt myself with a tool because I think I know it all? And those of you that said oh, that hasn't happened to me, you're a liar. <laughs> Because sod's law always happens. <laughs> so yeah, just give it a little clean around like that and just, you know, all done. So that's pretty much the inside of it, guys. So if you flip it over, um, there isn't much really to do on the outside. I mean, you can, if you want to, just go around it with a cotton bud from the outside point in there like that. Just give it a little white round there. There's not much really you should find on there. If it is caked up in gumph, which is often the case if you buy these on eBay um, and they haven't been stored very well or they haven't been looked after, um, they will be quite in appalling condition sometimes. But believe it or not, if you 
give a little bit of time and love to these I and mean, you can get them really nice. So that's pretty much that out of the way. I'm not going to dwell on that too much. I'm going to chuck that in my box over there. Next comes the bogey truck or the plastic frame that holds the motor. This is exactly the same procedure as you saw with the uh, cotton bud earlier. Dunk it in some white spirit and just go for it. And there's no set way to do this, just however you want to do it, whatever way works for you. But I just start on one side like that and just go round in a clockwise direction. Just give it a little wipe over. Get in the corner there. I love John Chambers, the way he does his stuff, he's fantastic. But, uh, everyone's got their own way of doing things, but that's how I do it, I just give it a general white round. Um, they shouldn't be that filthy, um, as you can see on my cotton bud there, there isn't loads of black gump compared to our last um, shot there with the motor clean out. That's quite uh, dry, so again, turn your cotton bud over to the plain end, you've got clean and spare and just come back around yourself around it. Just generally give it a tidy up in there. Like I said there isn't that much gump you should find in here. If it's been looked after well or it's been reasonably handled well you shouldn't get too much rubbish in here. Just come back like that and just get a bit of a tidy up in there. Mainly the wheel areas where the wheels sit in sort of these areas you'll get a little bit of dirt sometimes but not too much but other than that it's pretty good as gold flip it over if you wish to don't have to but anything lurking sort of around there this is me being finicky by the way so you don't have to do this like I said this, this, this video might not work for you but just some ideas if you want to take these ideas and just have a go yourself that's the name of the game isn't it all right so yeah that's that's done so I'm gonna chuck that in the box and what you want to do another good practice on anything you do in life make sure you keep nice and clean and tidy so what I'm going to do now I'm going to bung these in the bin don't need to keep those anymore and also go and wash your hands because you've got dirt and oil and white spirit and all kinds of natural oils on your fingers that well won't really help the process so go and scrub your hands have another cuppa no excuse for a cup of tea or coffee and that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to come back in a minute and then we'll reassemble and we'll test the motor see you in a bit Okay, welcome back folks, just had to pop out there and just uh, put a DVD on for my little girl downstairs to uh, keep her occupied rather than terrorising me up here. <laughs> um, let's move onwards, so we're going to put everything back together now. So we've got our bogey truck which we cleaned earlier with our cotton buds, nice and clean. Pretty happy with that. And we've got our commentator plate. And of course we've got, most importantly, our motor. So we've got to put everything back together, like I said. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our commutator plate back on the motor and just get the motor going together. So if we put that to one side like that, hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. If I get it centered, that's better. Right. So when you put this back together, it's quite simple. You'll see two long prongs, one there and one there and then you've got some holes there and there that correspond with the back of that plate and all you're going to do is basically put it back together so sometimes the easiest thing to do is to take these wheels off they do get in the way so just leave those off they do come off he says mm. there we go get that out of the way that's better now we can do it properly so, put that back. Let me just zoom in a little bit better. That's better, isn't it? Right, okay. If my fingers are in the way, I apologise. Right, so just basically push it together. You'll hear it, you'll feel and hear it click when you put it together. So just go around and Work it with your thing fingers in there. Just ease it in. I 
icon there around it. There we go, you heard that. And it's it's back on there now, as you can see, it's all nice and tight. That's what we want. So we'll just put the um, brushes and springs back in there. So what I do is just bend these arms up, not too much, to about say there, so you can get enough space to get in there with the brushes and springs. And then as you can see, they've been sitting in that for about a good 20 minutes in that white spirit solution, which has helped that become nice and clean. And all we're going to do is have a look at these. Now, they look clean as well, and more importantly, they've been sitting in the white spirit, which has cleaned them. But as well, what I should have realized that really said to you at the beginning as well. If these carbon brushes are really, really worn, obviously you will need to replace them. And Peter Spares, plug, plug, on eBay is absolutely fantastic for getting hold of those. You can you find them on eBay generally. Um, you'll need to get some of these. It's worth actually ordering loads of these because you will get through them if you've got the older type models. Um, they do tend to wear out over a period of time, so you can always order some more. But for this purpose, of the video, mine's okay. And then what I normally do as well, sorry, that's in the way there. Apologise. If you can see this at home, but you can't see it because it's out of camera shot. I do apologise again. It's not working for me. This is very well. I'll try and do the best I can. What I've done here, I'm just going to take my carbon brush in between my tweezers and very carefully just dry it off on the towel. Any residue on there, just clean it very carefully. And the towel grips these little small parts reasonably well so they don't going to ping off and fly off everywhere but be careful just give it a little clean and then once you've done that again that's my way of doing it dry it off sit it back in the hole and you always put it with the the worn flat end back in its seat to where it was against the uh, commutator goes in there encourage it in there that's one and then we'll do the next one Is in there. Where is it? There it is. Oh, I've picked up the spring at the same time, don't want that. Okay. Just roll it about on, on the towel or your cloth, whatever you're using. That tends to dry it off as well. But I just, again, this is because I said at the beginning of the video, this is my way of cleaning it. Uh, my way may not be your way. And that's okay, but. I tend to just do a little bit of drying off with that and then offer it up to the that's where it should seat in there using the tweezers guide it in can be a bit fiddly once they find their hole all the way home they sit in there as you can see they're now seated in there and the next Law of sod is the springs. Again, just dry these off, not too much, but obviously just to shake the rest of you off there, and then offer them up one at a time. But did, you, did you see that? Did you see it ping off there? That's why normally I tend to use the end of the tweezers, hold it in there. Sometimes your fingers work best. Different. Once you've got it seated in there like that, as you can see, once it's seated, just find it's a little. See what I mean? It's. Oh, I hate these things. I really do. But let's say you learn patience in this hobby. And just once you've got it in there, just bring that down. It says, "Don't give up." persevere with it. I'm not the first or the last person to find these fiddly. That's it, once you've got it there just bring it home to the centre of the plate there. There's like a little raised nipple on the other side there if you can see that there. Uh, there. There's a little raised nipple that corresponds with the top of the spring. 
once you fire that just push it down with finger pressure so it just sits like that and then just repeat the process on the other side a little bit better that time going in. So there we go, if I turn it up at that angle, hopefully you can see that at home, that's how much gap you want between the back of the plate and the arm that retains the spring and the brush. That's roughly where you want to set it at, so it's about that much. Nothing too ridiculously tight or too loose, that's about where I have it. Okay, so that's basically back together and We've got our little, this little chip here by the way, this little, where is it, come on, this little chip here, I call it a chip, it's probably not, um, this is the little device that stops interference with your television and radio at home, um, you normally find these on the old ring field motors, also on the modern motors, they're, they're there as well, um, but these ones you normally will find between these two arms here you'll find one of these. I was going to say if they're a little bit loose like mine what you can do is, is just re-bend them over or ideally what you can do and what best practice is um, me personally would be the solder that on there and there. So you can put a blob of solder there and a blob of solder there and it just helps that that's what you can do. And that's pretty much it for the motor assembly and obviously what you do is, is put the wheels back on so what we're going to do is put the wheels and axles back on there is a dead giveaway on how to put the axles back in the holes it sounds like a stupid question but um, there is a certain way these wheels go around obviously if you look at the cogs and the gear in that side and on your wheels that go through you've got a plain axle I really hate this bloody camera it's so awkward being upside down, you can't see sod all. Right, like I said, you get a plain side and a cog side. Obviously, there's your, there's your geared cog wheel, and there's your plain wheel. So it's dead easy. I'm not insulting your intelligence, but obviously, put them around the right way. Get one in there like that. And while you're at it as well, I was going to say, if you've got these wheels off, um, a good thing to do is you can look at these these gear teeth on your wheel and see if any are actually damaged or they're worn away if they're slightly damaged there is ways you can fix these you can file them out and do sorts of things but normally best practice is to replace these if these, any, if these teeth are worn or badly damaged or whatever they won't engage with the gears on the motor and your wheels would start spinning round and not engage properly um, again, these gear teeth on these gear wheels do check them for any signs of wear and tear and damage. Often you get them on eBay and you get little problems like that happen where the advertiser or the seller will say, oh, it's a poor runner or it doesn't work very well. Sometimes the motor may be clean, but these gear teeth are actually worn, so that might be the issue. So, what I'm going to do is just look at that. That's okay. Yeah, that's spinning okay. That's got plenty of lubrication on there, as mentioned earlier. So, like we were talking about originally, reseat your wheels. I know I'm waffling on a little bit, but sometimes it's good to share your experience with other people and what you've learned and picked up, because it all is valuable information. And in all the stages of life, one is never too old to learn. So put those through there, shut that through there, and you make sure those wheels are nice and home and the centre of the the axles actually come flush to the top of the wheels inside there. They don't want to be too much over, they don't want to be underneath, they don't want to be just about right. So you'll feel and hear those click into place when they've got they're far up enough as they go. Also on these particular wheels here. Um, 
these have got traction tyres on this particular model so again you can check these traction tyres to make sure they're okay and that they're not worn or they're slipped off mine seem to be pretty much okay there the other thing you want to check as well is take a how is it take your finger and just gently press against these wheels they should have a little bit of resistance and they need a little bit of pushing force to turn it it should be reasonably tight but obviously if you're pushing these wheels gently and they're turning obviously they're not engaged with the teeth properly but rule of thumb is everything should be reasonably tight on there and there should be a little bit of torque at least so there's our motor reassembled and cleaned and all that remains now to do is to connect it up and apply some power to it and proof is in the pudding as they say so all we'll do is just reattach as you can see there's one tag there it's going to go onto here and we'll just physically reattach that into there we should use pliers I know but I find my fingers work better All you do, edge of your finger, gently push it down on there. Be careful of your fingers, sometimes sharp edges do pose a threat. So you can use pliers or whatever, but me being me, I use my fingers. Okay, so our next tag obviously is the one from the pickup bogey on the other end, and also the lighting tag, as we mentioned earlier. We'll fit those in a minute, but the main proof of the pudding is to get this motor running and to prove that it's okay and it works much better as a result of our service. So we don't need our little uh, bath anymore in there, we get rid of that. Let's put that out of the way before it gets knocked over. And I'm just going to plug my power supply in. And all we're going to do is apply some power. I'm going to be very, 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 very lazy today. I'm not going to get my crocodile clips out. I'm just going to use the two wires as they are. And hopefully we can see a difference. So if I turn that upside down in the camera shot and just apply a little bit of power, we should see what happens. Now I can see and hear that motor, that's running sweet. Beautiful. Let's just turn the juice down. Let's open it up on inch, as I would say. See what happens. Yeah, it wants to go. One that is very, very low on my controller, and it is very low. Barely got it open. Turn it up a little bit. Yeah, it's turning. That's too much. There you go. That's what I was trying to talk to you about. Admittedly, these, these leads are slipping off here, so I do apologise for that, but if I hold them on there. Come on. Today, come on. There we go. There 
There we go. That's a reasonably slow speed. I'll do it in the other direction. There you go. I'll just turn this fan off. That's better, so you can actually hear the motor as well. That's probably because these leads are a little bit, a little bit loose in the contact. But I mean, as you can see, it's got a reasonable amount of play on there. I turn it up a little bit more. There we go. Now listen to that. Come on. There we go. Well, that sounds sweet. That's one sweet running motor. That little intermittent jerkiness was because these leads weren't being held in place properly and obviously wasn't a great connection and because these obviously were going across these plates which weren't fantastic. But as you can see, everything works really well on there. Just turn it around the other way so you can have a look around this way what's going on as well. It's bad practice putting these in here like this, but I'll try and do it this way. It's a live chassis, so it'll pick up from there as well. As you can see, that's sweet. Everything's running nice. Look, you can hear it and you can see it. And you can see there's no sparks in there whatsoever. much better there we go so that's that done so that's pretty much how you service one of these motors and do that so all that remains to do now is to put this back into the bogey truck now these are quite easy to do as you can see at one end there's a small indentation so one end's got a small indentation and the other end's got a large indentation so so all you're going to do is just do that. So I'll just pause this before my daughter destroys the house and I shall see you in a moment. Okay, welcome back. Apologies for that uh, brief interruption there. So I thought what I'd do before I put those back together properly, I'd solder the little um, television intermitter, whatever you call it, chip that goes across these two terminals. I'd solder it in place properly and do a better job on that. So I've got the iron nice and hot. So I thought I'd do that now. Pick a weapon of choice in my little pot here, that'll do. Uh, this is flux, and I, I always use a little bit of flux on there, it just helps the joint flow a bit better when you're soldering. Nice and hot. That's it. Job done. So what I'll do now is just reattach these wires to uh, the rest of the power car and then what I'll do, I'll turn the camera on the layout behind me 
and the proof will be in the pudding and we'll do some running and you can see what you think but hopefully so far today the simple process that I've done sorry if it's been a, bit, a little bit drawn out and long, drug, long dragged and whatever but um, I hope the basics of it and the mechanics of it is something you can do at home okay so I'll just put this back on the uh, logo itself and we'll get things running Right, I'll do this quickly before the battery runs out, but just to prove that this motor now works properly. That's on quite a slow speed. Give it a little bit more. My battery's going to die in a minute, so if I don't get a chance, say goodbye. Thanks for watching the video today. Hope you enjoyed. And there we go. One smooth and cleaned power car.